In this video, I'm going to be going over some of the features of the texture preview extension for AceBrite. Uh, the basic concept of this is that you can have a, uh, a texture like this, this wood here. Let's hide the door behind it. So you've got this wood, this wood texture. And then that texture also has uh, some maps underneath it, like in this case, this normal map and a roughness map and a depth map. Uh, the depth map is also sometimes called a height map. So what we can do is we can actually go up here to view. And once you've installed the texture preview extension, you should be able to just click this little texture preview thing here. One thing to make note of is that um, you do need to be in the RGB color mode. So you see you've got this little texture preview window and we can move this little display around. And you can already notice uh, it has some, uh, some height to it. And that's because of this depth map. Uh, if I were to delete the image from the depth map, you can see it actually detects that the depth map is not found. And it returns to being just this flat texture. So you can actually emphasize or uh, invert that depth map. We're going to emphasize it just so we can see some more of the, uh, the structure there. The other thing you can see uh, if we set the depth map to zero um, is we actually have some lighting. And you can also see that a normal map is being applied to kind of modify the direction of how the light interacts with the surface. And that is further emphasized by the depth of objects. So there are not a whole lot of settings that you need to mess with for this. Uh, there is this normalize depth option, and that'll just make sure that uh, if you have a depth map with, you know, a very few changes in depth in it, uh, it will kind of stretch that out and exaggerate it so you can actually tell what's going on. Uh, if we untick this normalized depth, you can see that the texture is actually pretty flat. And so that normalized depth checkbox there just really helps to see kind of what's going on inside a texture. If we actually take a look at this map, you can see it's mostly centered around uh, like 50% gray instead of having white pixels or black pixels. Uh, as far as the structure of these files go, in order to get all of the textures loaded and visible and applying like they should, uh, you can always click this little help button here, and that actually shows you the structure that you need. So you can have uh, any name as this, the color, the full color image for your texture. But then underneath it, you need to have normal roughness and depth. Uh, now, you don't have to have all of them, um, but if you are missing any of the textures, it will obviously not load that texture and not use it. But it'll you know, give you this little warning here telling you it couldn't find it. Uh, you can also choose to have aliasing on the texture display. And this kind of just makes it a little smoother, a little, a little more fuzzy. I prefer to have it with anti-aliasing off. It just, in my opinion, that's what looks better. That doesn't actually change any of the uh, qualities of the texture. It's just a little visual thing. Same with, you can modify the background color. I usually just leave this blank because it's less distracting. But if you had, you know, a texture that was a similar color to this background, maybe you'd want to change that background color so it would be more visible. You also have this advanced view, and this shows you, one, the pitch and roll of the texture itself. That's just a way of knowing kind of what angle you're looking at. It also displays the uh, frame rate that this little rendering preview is running at. Larger textures will be slower. Um, you can actually see here, if I go over to this size, this is 32 by 32, and you can see that the frame rate drops pretty significantly. Uh, anything larger than this will be scaled down, 
and rendered at a smaller resolution just to keep this from, you know, running too slowly. The other thing it does is it actually displays all three textures that you're seeing. Um, and it also gives you these little uh, direction lines. And what these are is they are little lines projected from the surface normals to tell you the direction that those surfaces are pointing. And that can be helpful kind of like if you're trying to, to debug maybe why something doesn't look like you think it should. Um, these can just tell you, oh, that surface is pointing that direction or this one's pointing you know, that direction. And that can be really helpful. For the most part, as long as you follow the file structure indicated here, you should have no problems getting your textures detected. It also automatically changes shape and size depending on you know, what size texture you're viewing. So in this case, this is a 32 by 32 square and it's displaying that. In this case, it's a 16 by 16 square, it's displaying that. If we go down here into this layer, you can see that now it's rendering this uh, 16 by 32 square. And this is a, a little door texture. Um, it'll follow that, you know, you can actually move the door around in this, uh, in this canvas and it'll still keep rendering it right where it is. Um, a trick that I actually like to do when working on these textures is I can move the, uh, the pieces around and it will actually, oh, I've got auto select layers turned on. There we go. You can actually move the different textures around and now you can see them all at once, um, but it'll still keep displaying that primary texture at the top there. One thing you do want to be careful of is Occasionally, um, a sprite will have these canvas elements, these objects, um, and you can actually have them pushed off of the screen and it still exists, right? So that texture still exists inside of this, uh, this space here. It's not deleted. It's just not visible. It's off screen. Um, and this can be really confusing. Uh, so something you can do just to see if there are any of those that exist is hold the control button like I'm doing right now. And that'll actually show you that we have this texture here that's outside of the normal canvas area. That's, that's something to keep in mind if you're trying to work with textures and you're getting something weird going on. Like if I were to put a dot here and then say move this off screen, you know, I can't see where this piece of wood is. But I've got this dot and it's kind of interfering with my whole texture here. You know, my, my textures aren't loading because there's a size mismatch. And I don't know what's going on, but I can see if I hold that control button, oh, there's a weird texture bit over here. So that's just, that's something you want to be careful of. Um, that kind of points out uh, another important feature. Um, your textures and their material maps, these things, need to be the same size. You can't have different size maps and textures. I think that kind of just makes intuitive sense, but in, in case you know you try to do that, you can't, and it'll tell you. Like if I try to expand this uh, this wood texture here with some stuff on the side, you know it'll show it, it'll display that, but it also won't load any of the maps because they're not the right size. So that's uh, that's pretty much how this little texture preview works, and this is. Primarily just to help out, you know, if you've got a game that's using some uh, some photo-based rendering techniques like this with normal maps and, and displacement maps and roughness maps, uh, this is a good way to visualize it inside of your little art program. Um, and it updates in real time and you can, you know, add stuff to textures. Oh, hold on. I am on the wrong layer here. Always make sure you're on the right layer. So if I'm on this uh, this depth layer, I can just draw stuff in and you can see it being applied in real time. That's actually the, uh, the little shifting there going on you can see is that layer normalization. So if I turn off that normalized depth and then I start drawing, you see that it just changes where I'm drawing. So yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much how this works. Um, let me know if you have any other questions and uh, any features you want implemented. Have fun.